I'm super excited uh, to have with us somebody so amazing. Pastor Mike and uh, Pastor Ina with us today. Uh, Pastor Mike has been a huge blessing in my life. He's a man of wisdom, man of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, just like Stephen in the Bible. And I remember, um, I remember that time where uh, you, you took me with you to go fasting. Remember that time we went to the rehab center and we fasted. He just took me alongside with him and it was a huge blessing in my life. I even remember the revelation you got during that time when we were fasting. You probably don't even remember, but I do. It was a revelation uh, about the Holy Spirit and the reason the world doesn't get the Holy Spirit because they're neither looking for him or seeking him and it kind of stuck with in my heart what what probably looked like something ordinary for him it was life-changing for me I even remember what he you know that's it was a Saturday I think we uh, we were there on the Saturday and it stuck with me my whole life and it's been a blessing so Pastor Mike I want to invite you up on the stage Pastor Ina why don't you give it up for them we're super excited to open up our hearts and to listen what you have to say Hey church, how's everybody doing? Good to see, man, you all got to get some joy of the Lord up in this place. Come on, we, we, this ain't a funeral, so it's a revival service. Yes, my wife is with me. I want to just um, have her just share a minute or two and what's on her heart. Um, I want to hear my wife preach too a little bit, so. Well, you guys, happy Valentine's Day. Anybody remember? No? I, I forgot. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to share an encouragement with you guys, especially today's Valentine's Day, the day of love, and I feel like it's so fitting. But this came to me one day during worship at our church in Sacramento. We were singing the song, Jesus, I love you. Oh, how I love you. I adore you. And I just remember just looking at, at the congregation and just this feeling overwhelmed me because I remembered a time where I couldn't utter those words. I couldn't truthfully from my heart say Jesus I love you you're so good to me I just had such a hard time faking it and so my heart went out to some of the people in the congregation I was looking at them and I think maybe there's somebody here today that's here's these songs here's songs of victory but you're not feeling that in your heart today you're not feeling that your prayers are being answered you're not you've been maybe fighting for a family member maybe you've been battling a health condition maybe you've been fighting for your marriage and you're just not seeing a breakthrough today I just want to offer you just a little perspective shift scripture says that we love because he first loved us and that was so perfectly demonstrated at the cross so today I just want to encourage you to come to the cross where that love that dimensions the four ways that it goes his love is so wide that it covers every single circumstance in your life no matter what it is it covers every circumstance it covers every sinner every sinner it's so deep that it reached down when you were in your de deepest darkest place reached down and brought you out of that sin and reconnected you with the father I just think when we have that perspective change, when we start thinking about what Christ has already done for us, not what we have, what we, not what we don't see right now in the moment, but what already has been done, we joyfully with our entire being start praising him and telling him how much we love him. So I just want to encourage you today on this day of love, maybe today is the day you need to make that decision. You know what? I'm going to think about everything that Christ has already done for me and just be patient in the moment and just trust the process. So God bless you guys. I guess we can just go home after that message. You know what I mean? It was, you guys, so good to um, be here with y'all. Maybe some of you know or not, this was our home for seven years. Um, until, still at home, but three and a half years ago, God moved our family to Sacramento to plant a church, a new church, um, Genesis Church. And I, I got to tell you, it's been a crazy ride. It's been a good ride. And God has been so good to us. And, um, and I'm just blessed to be here with you guys. Um, see so many, all, some of y'all have grown up, I'm telling you, you know. We got an older, people like, people like, that's why I cut my hair so short, to hide all the gray hairs, you know. Like wisdom's finally creeping in, you know what I'm saying. Right when you're about 40, finally the wisdom is there. 
But um, I'm just blessed and happy to be with you guys. I want to speak about love, same kind of topic, kind of more foundational um, element of it, not as much pertaining to relationships and so on, but kind of more the foundational part of love. And, you know, one, one of my, my favorite books in the Bible is Genesis. That's why we named the church Genesis. I mean, that's not why, but um, I just love the book of Genesis. I mean, some of you have been in for a while because there's some people. Have you ever been there like you're like, Lord, I'm going to read the Bible in the whole year. And then you're like, Genesis, you know, Exodus. And then you, you read like Leviticus. You're like, um, pause next year. Lord, I'm going to read the Bible again. You go to Genesis. And next, this time you kind of go past through. You get, you get to Deuteronomy. And then you're like, oh, you pause there for a year, you know. But anyways, Genesis is a good book. I read, I read it almost every year. And I love how it starts. And I think this is like a foundation for our lives. This, these are the first words of Genesis. In the beginning, God. I love that phrase. Because it tells us that everything starts with God and everything ends with God. And if you want to find, you want to know your purpose, you have to get to know God. Because God created you with a purpose, you know what I mean? It's like one thing that I've learned as a, as a, as a father, you know, like, Ikea people, any Ikea folks up in here? Nobody here? You some of you? Okay, at least one honest person here, okay. Like, one thing that I've learned about Ikea is when I buy things from Ikea, before I do anything, I look towards the instructions. Because I've tried a few times. I know it all. And I had to redo. It took me twice as long because now i got to redo and then do it again. And I feel like that's how it is with life a lot of times. We f feel like i got to figure it out. I, I'm good. You know what I mean? But we forget that he is the one that created us. He knows the purpose, the plans for us. And, and when I go to God and I get the blueprint for my life, it begins to make sense. It begins to make sense. It's actually fun. It's exciting. When you actually get to do life with God. So the one of the ways that we get to get that we get to know God and we have to understand something about him is written in 1 John 4 16. John says, God is love. When you think about it, God, it's not he's a little bit of love. God is actually love. He is love. Every, if, I mean, if you were to kind of see it that way, but every fiber of him, it's love. Everything around him is love. He is love. And I love what he goes, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. We can't talk about love without talking about God. We can't talk about God without talking about love. And, and I want to just, I want to throw this at you. But the test of your faith, like anybody want to wonder, how, how am I doing in my faith? The test of your faith is a test of love. How I love determines the faith that I have in my heart. And this is why today we are talking about love. Because it is by knowing love that we get to know God. Because it's all about, what, no, and maybe the question is, the title, what's love got to do with this? It has everything to do with this and the passage that I want to give us and I don't know about y'all but man I got my physical I got my b-i-b-l-e -E with me I realized can I just give you an advice a few years ago I read the, the, the electronic bible I gotta tell you I had one revelation the whole year I got the real bible man it's coming in every single day it's like raining up in here you know what i mean get a bible get read the bible well, get you got to get read the bible you know it kind of goes together but anyways a powerful passage i want to kind of just read this with you guys as the father loved me jesus says man these are the words of jesus okay it may be in your bible it's the words are in red it's power, it's, it's the words of jesus it says, as the Father has loved me, and we know the Father loved him, because the day he was baptized, the Bible tells us that John saw the, the dove coming down, and the Father said, this is my son, whom, in whom I am pleased, and who I love. And it says, so, because I have also loved you, 
as the Father loved me, I have loved you. Do you know that Jesus loves you? And then he goes, remain in my love. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love. Okay. Let me read this slowly because it's easy to miss. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. What Jesus is doing here, he's inviting all of us into a love that he has with the Father. In, in the Greek language, and I've been, I've been kind of looking to the language stuff. But this love here has a, the word means agape. There's different kinds of loves. There's, you know, eros, where we get that love, love stuff. We know it's that love when you sit with somebody that you've dated and you're in love with. I'm telling you, the temperature changes. You know, that kind of love. But the greatest love, it's the agape love. And this agape love is mentioned over 200 times in the New Testament. So it's referring to this unconditional love. It's the highest form of love and charity. It's the love that God has for us. And it's the way we love God. It's the highest form of love. And Jesus is saying... Remain in, so when, when you come to the Lord, you enter a, a, a relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You enter into this love. And Jesus tells us, remain in my love. Remain, stay put, don't get distracted. It's, it's like the same, I mean, it's the same, for example, the way it would sound to a lot of us. If you, if you, if you got your, your driver license, your dad would be like, sweetheart, keep your eyes on the road. That's kind of what it would be. Because the moment you are texting and you just got your license yesterday and you're texting, you know what I mean? You're looking at your phone, who's winning, or the see, you know what I mean? Like the moment you get distracted, the chances of you hitting something, it's so much higher. And that's why Jesus tells us, remain in my love because it's so easy to get distracted. To come out of that love. And Jesus tells us there's two ways how I remain in the love. First way is by obeying his command, obeying his word. And the reason why we obey God's word is because we are followers of Jesus. And the second way is when we abide in him. When we, when we have a relationship with Jesus, it's, there's the fruit of the spirit is what? Love. In other words, can I just say this? It's impossible to be in Christ and not to love. Like I, I love, I love my kids. I have this. I have five kids, but my eight-year-old and a four-year-old. This one of the things, like, Dad, Dad, give me a light of fire. And I'm like, What's tonight? If I have a meeting at night, I'm not doing a fire. Dad, can you just just, just start it for us? I ain't gonna start it. But if I have a free evening, I'm gonna come out there. We got, you know, like we get some marshmallows out. I light the fire, but I'm telling you, 10 minutes lighting that thing up, and anywhere I go, why you smell like that? Smoke. You spend half an hour next to a fire, and you leave that place, guess what's going to happen? Everybody's going to know that you were around fire. It's going to like God. You hang out with God for too long, the People around you will begin to sense, dude, something is different about you. Why? Because God is love. And when you hang with God, guess what comes out of you? The fruit of the Spirit, which is love. It can't go any other way. 
If you are hanging out with Jesus and you are hating, I'm telling you, you got a wrong Jesus. It ain't the Jesus of the gospel. Remain in my love. And the thing is, well, this is one of my favorite passages. I love this passage. Check this out. It says in John 13, 35, and the world will know that you are my disciples. The world will know that you are my disciples. Not when you wear cool jeans in church on stage. <laughs> this boy's been praying for 24 hours. You know what I mean? Like, that's not how the world, I'm sorry, but that, that, that might, you might fool somebody. Don't play. <laughs> but we see what happens though. Is the world will know that you are my disciples, not because of the cool, brand, red-looking key thing going on here. The world is not going to know that you're my disciples because, you know, you got some good, cool preaching going on. No. They will know that you are my disciples when they see the love amongst you guys. How you love. And that's why right now the devil knows that. The best way to evangelize the world is to love each other. The devil knows. That's why right now all around the places, man, they're just. <clears throat> the devil knows that. But the world will know. And, man, there is the love. The love is in the world. You know what I mean? Like the, there is love in the world. People get married. You know what I mean? But the love in the world is condition, it's conditional. You love me, I love you back. You hurt me, I hurt you back. You know what I mean? Like that's the way people do it in the world. But you know what? When you are connected to Jesus and the Spirit of God produces a fruit of the Spirit, which is love, this love is supernatural. This love is different. This is the agape love that when the world encounters it, they're like, whoa, what is that? It's it's not normal. You're supposed to hate. You're supposed to retaliate. You're supposed to come on, bring a commotion. Why are you so calm? I would have, to somebody, if they'd done it to me, but you're, why? Because there's something in you. And the world, when they see it, they want it. This agape love. It's powerful. It's contagious. It's attractive. So Jesus says, to remain in my love, you have to obey my command. And now can I just tell you this again? You have to obey his command. This is not an option. Like, hey, if you want to love, you can. If you don't, let's vote against it. A majority hate it. Let's hate each other. You know what I mean? Like it's not, a, it's not debatable. It's not a suggestion. It's not an option. If you want to be a Christian, you know, if you want to follow the Bible, go ahead. But if you don't, just do do you do, you do you, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's not what it means. A command, it's a requirement. It's a requirement. If you're a child of God, this is how we live. You come to my house, there's requirements in my house, you know what I mean? Jesus is telling us right now, it's once again, it's a command for every Christian Every person that, that professes the name of Christ, it tells us right here, love each other as I have loved you. This is the standard to be in the communion with the Trinity. To be in the relationship with God, you have to love each other. Other as I have loved you. This is how you remain in Christ's love. And I want to tell you, man, if this message was something that I would preach for the rest of my life, that's all, that, that's all you need. If you, were to, if you were to love each other, like, like with agape love, that's all we would need for, that's it. We would be good until Jesus returns. In this one command is everything. Still love each other. Still love each other. And what's interesting is that, man, I'm, I'm going to turn this passage, but, but then there's, there's other people. And, I, and I, I, want, I want you to hear this because this, this is here. Paul is getting at something 
Because a lot of times, you know, we, we tend to look at people and, you know, oh man, he's spiritual. Have you ever, ever seen spiritual people? We like spiritual people, huh, sometimes. But here he goes, if I have a gift of prophecy, come on, we like prophets. We like him. We always want one in our church, you know what I mean? He goes, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Like he is a bright PhD, master's degree, theology like deep in. Every church needs a few of those. And if I have all the faith, that's so that I can move mountains. Ooh, come on, give me some of that piece of that faith. And we're like, man, you get these three things together. You're like, dude, this is a one spiritual dude. This is a one spiritual lady. Come on, give me more of these people. But then he tells us something where he kind of throws this curveball at us. But do not have love, I am nothing. Your spirituality is nothing if the agape love don't live in your heart. I don't care what kind of prophecy, what kind of mysteries you know. I don't care what kind of mountains you are moving. But if you are having a hard time loving your brothers and your sisters, Paul says, you are nothing. I don't care if you have over 10,000 followers on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. No, TikTok, you have to be at least 100,000. doesn't matter. If you have a lot of followers... But there is no love in my heart. It does me no good. And this is why, like Paul, that, sorry, Jesus, this really caught my eye this year, guys. As I'm, I was, as I'm going through the Bible, I'm just reading just things. As for the first time, God, speak to my heart. And you know, Matthew 24, it's the blueprint of the last days. Like you want to know how the last days will go? Just go to Matthew 24. It tells you. The last days, how it's going to be. Like, it's the blueprint. Like, if you want to know who the last days, go to Jesus. You know what I mean? But I, I noticed something this time that I've never noticed before concerning the last days. I want you to hear this. Because this is a warning. This, this is something that Jesus spoke that will happen in the last days. In, in 24, verse 4, it says, Jesus replied to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Okay. So, I can be deceived. For many will come in my name, say I'm the Messiah, and they will deceive many. They will deceive many. Many means a lot. It means more than one. A lot. So first part. Few verses down. Then, he, then they will hand you over to your persecutor and they will kill you. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away. But I want a revival, Lord. But yes, the revival will come. But at the same time, many will fall away. Betray one another and hate one another. And then he says, many false prophets will arise and betray and deceive many. A few verses down. Verse 20, 23, 24. For false messiahs, false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, the elect. What? Lord, really? One of the signs of the last days will be a lot of deception. What is deception? It's your thinking that you're driving to California, you and your shorties. Shorts, shorties. So I'm sure you understand. Like you're sure. Why? Because it's, you know, it's hot. So you jump on the bus. Mm, I'm going to California. It's going to be warm. I'm going to get a tan. I'm going to look good. For example. A few hours later, it's getting colder. And you, 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 you're getting frustrated. You're like, hey, what's going on? And then you reach this big old border. You're like, border? Give you a passport. I said, well, I don't got a passport. What do you mean a passport? Well, well, buddy, we're in a Canadian border. And you're like, what do you mean Canadian? I was going to California. Well, the thing is, the sign says Canada, but you decided not to pay attention. You went south. That's de you're deceived. You're thinking you're going one way, but you're actually going the complete op opposite way. That's what it means, to be deceived. And what Jesus is telling us here, and I want you to hear me. That there will be people in the last days that profess to know Jesus. 
They will be coming to church, singing worship. They will do all the rituals, all the good stuff that everybody else does. But Bible says here, but they will fall away, fall away, fall away. What does it look like when a person begins to fall away from what? From the grace of God. Falling away. What does it look like? And here it says that they will, they will fall, by hating, they will betray each other. Betray one another and will hate one another. This is a sign of deception. This is a sign that I'm falling away. Is instead of loving people, I'm starting to hate people. This is one of the scariest places to be. Because if I'm in communion with God, I'm supposed to love. But what happens when I'm beginning to hate, it means I've lost the communion with the Holy Spirit. I can go to church, but the relationship is not there. Why? Because I'm starting to hate. They're irritating me. I want to go to church. Man, I'm a bunch of hypocrites. Can't stand those Christians. This is the signs of the last days. Jesus says, remain in my love. And I want to just say this. Jesus was saying, because these things I've spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. When you're loving, there is joy in it. You know what I'm saying? When you are loving God, you are loving people, in that there is joy. And this joy is visible. Come on, in worship it's visible. In my life it's visible. In my jobs it's visible. There's joy. It's such a beautiful thing. So I want to just give you... A few practical advices. How do we live? How do we live in this love? How do I, what do I do right now? Okay, Pastor Mike, I got you. I hear you. There's some things in my heart that I, I you know, I, I have a hard time. What do I do? I want to give you just a few, few practical steps before we conclude the service. So First Peter, if you have your Bibles, it's opened up to First Peter. Come on, we get into some scripture today, all right? Come on, we want some scripture today. So I want us to go to 1 Peter. And, and I want you to hear what he says. Since you have purified yourself by your obedience to the truth. Okay. So let me kind of break that down. So what happens, you get purified. You get sanctified. What is sanctification? What does it mean to be sanctified? It means you look more and more like Jesus. That's what it means to be purified, sanctified. How do you do that? By obeying the truth, by obeying God's word, you know, following the commands that he gives us. That's what it means. So what happens? Being, as I'm looking, I'm, I'm going after God. I'm obeying his word. He's changing me inside. What happens? So Peter tells us, so that you show sincere brotherly love for each other. Wow, okay. That's what happens. When I'm following after God, there is an ability to love my brothers and my sisters. That's what happens inside of me. When I become a follower of Jesus, I'm given the ability to love other people, to love you guys. So he says, so, because of that from a pure heart, love one another constantly. Not on Sunday, <laughs> not on Friday, at the youth service, constantly. So, what, so, so th can I go to the next thing? So what does he tell us to do? So we have the ability to love. Now he tells us in verse 2, verse, uh, chap chapter 2, verse 1, he goes, Therefore, having the ability to love in your heart, do this. Therefore, rid yourself of all malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. So there are things that God will do for you, but there are things that God expects you to do. Choice you have to make. You have to get rid of them. Like the moment you see these things sprouting in your heart, get rid of them. Kill them. Destroy them. Take them out of your heart. Because if you don't, they will take root inside and literally 
Take away all the love that is in your heart for other people. Get rid of it. For example, let me get, at, least, at least give you one example. So let's say envy. What is envy? I want to have what he has. So Paul has a job. He's been working there for five years. Not, I'm not you have a job. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, so he got, he got a job and, and, so, and who can I, that I cannot. So he gets a job. He's been working for five years. He gets paid $25 an hour. Somebody else comes along from church, works for about a year and gets a raise and gets $30. And Brother Paul's like, hey, bro, you got a raise. Yeah, I got a raise, bro. I got a raise. The Lord, I got, I've been praying for this job and God bless me. Like, yeah, well, how much they're giving you, bro? 30 bucks an hour. 30 bucks an hour. <sighs> I've been working for five years. I got 25. What is going on? And if you are not careful and let that creep into your heart, you're going to start looking down upon the other guy. And this can be in any sphere. If you are not careful, jealousy will creep into your heart and cast out love that's inside of your heart. Instead of rejoicing, be like, bro, you got 30? My man, wow, praise God. Lord, thank you. Get rid of these things out of your heart because if you don't, they will take root. And it's a matter of time before your heart begins to stink. It's like this, I don't know, like I got a teenager, 15-year-old in my house, you know what I mean? And one of the things me and my wife do, Sam, keep your room clean. It was one of the hardest things I'm telling you. We have done all kinds of stuff. But it's, but it's just, it's one of those moments. You come in the room and my wife is like, wow, what stinks in here? What stinks? What smells good to me? Well, well the, the reason why it smells good to you because you've been in this room for a long time. You know what I mean? And my wife says, look under the bed and guess what? There's food left over. There's some plates left over. You know what I mean? And after a while, if you don't clean it, it begins to stink. That's how it is with these things. If there's deceit in your heart, like I want to get something from Sorry, Paul, I'm just using the illustration here. I want something from Paul, so you know what I do? Hey, Paul, I love you so much, man. But inside, I want something. There's not truth there. How about slander? And it looks so pretty sometimes. Hey, brother, can I, I'm really concerned about Pastor Paul. I just feel like he's really lost it a little bit, you know. Like, I want to just tell you as a friend, because I'm really worried about Paul. You know what you're doing? You're slandering. You don't care about Paul. But it looks really good. Because if you cared about Paul, you'd come and say, Brother Paul, I'm worried about you, buddy. And you tell him directly, face to face. But if you're telling everybody else in the church about your concern for Paul, that is slander, not care. And the Bible says, get rid of these things out of your heart because there's so many people wondering, why does everybody kind of avoid me? Because, you know, they're scared of you. They touch you, man, and all kinds of stuff is there, you know. Hypocrisy and slander and envy and everything. That's what Paul says, get rid of these things. You got to get rid. If you don't rid, these things will literally kill Push all the love of God out of your heart for other people. Get rid of them. And the next thing I want to, I want to mention, which I think is so vital in the time that we live in, is, I, I don't know how about you guys, but one, thing, one of the th things the devil does, Alice, can you run up here? You just look really good today. Run up here, bud. Just stand next to me. Well, yeah, you got you to gotta get quicker here, man. This time, this time is running. But see what happens, and this is what the devil does. The guy said, I want you to be careful. Because he wants to us, he wants us to build walls around between me and other people. Hurt, pain, past. Man, I'm, and a lot of Christians that I know, they hold everybody at a distance. Just, you know, hey, how you doing on Sunday? But I'm doing good. Praise God. I'll see you next Sunday. I want nothing to do with you Monday through Saturday. Nothing. 
But what the Bible tells us, in the, old, in the, in the, in the Mediterranean time of Jesus' days, there was a tradition that, you know, when you would see somebody that you really liked, like he was like a, like a friend, like somebody you really loved. You would come and you would just give him a kiss on the cheek. Like it, it's a greeting that they da- had at that time. And right now we, people still do it in South America. They come, it's so good to see you. Mwah. You know, like that's, what they, that's how they greet people. So Paul in the New Testament tells us, greet each other with a holy kiss. Five times he says that. Have you read that or no? Are you guys doing that or no? Okay, I'm, I was wondering. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's why I got to preach this Sunday, all right? I'm not going to practice on you. Don't worry here. But he's all worried. He's like, Jesus, sweating here. It's hot up in here, I'm telling you. But, but, but what this looks like in our time, what this looks like is that can you bring people closer? That's what, that's what Paul is telling us. That if you know that he's a Christian, that he loves Jesus, he's your brother, can you greet him? Can you bring him closer? And in our time, in, in our culture, co- culture where we live, is when you come a little closer, you go like this, right here. And you just bring him closer and say, but man, love you. This right here signifies, I accept you. I love you. You're precious to me. I pray peace over you. Right here, bring people closer. This right here is what Paul is telling us to do. Don't keep people at a distance. You have to bring them closer. Because the truth is, I want you to hear me. We have to begin to see Jesus in other people. In Matthew 25, there's a, there's a parable where it talks about one day he will divide the sheep and the goats. And he will say to them, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was in prison, you visited me. Lord, when did we see you? When did we see you? And Jesus will say, when you did it to one of my disciples, you did it unto me. We have to begin to see this picture. That when I say, that if I want to love God, this love is displayed in me loving people. You can never say that I love God and then hate people. It doesn't work that way, church. And I want to challenge you that every time you push somebody away in church, what you're re- literally, what you are doing is you're pushing Jesus away. When you gossip about somebody in church, what you really are doing, you are gossiping about Jesus himself. Because when you do it unto them, Jesus said, you're doing it unto me. There is no other way. How I treat my brother, how I treat my sister is how I'm treating Jesus. And you can be spiritual and you can say, oh God, I promise I will give you my heart. But if you cannot love your brother, I'm telling you, you will never genuinely love Jesus. Never. And I believe this is, this is where Jesus is calling us right now. Is to get back. Because this right here, this love here. This is foundational. This is how you built a house. This is how you built a church. This is how you build your life is by love. The foundation of your life needs to be love. If there is no love, no matter what you build, it's a matter of time. It will fall. It will fall. And I want to say that love, it grows through adversity. You know what that means? It means, I I want you to get this illustration that, for example... If I, if I want to look really good and have a six-pack, I got a one-pack. But if I want to ha- multiply the packs, what, what needs to happen is I got to go where? Help me out. Where I got to go? We'll go to the gym. And the, th- the truth is, can I, can I be honest with you? Watching the gym doesn't help. It's kind of like what happened to me when I got married with my wife and I would watch football like all the time. She's like, honey, why are you wasting so much time watching football? I said, sweetheart, I'm sorry. You married a very athletic guy. But that's how a lot of Christians are. You know what I mean? Like, I want to look good. I want to love more. And that's it. But the truth is, if you want to look strong, 
If you want to have muscles, they have, you got to go to the gym, get the bars, and, and bench as much as you can to a point where your muscles hurt. When your muscles hurt and you do it day after day, it's painful, but I'm pressing. After some time, there's evidence. Wow. Like, bro, you, mm, look at those guns. Or like we used to say, hey, you know, call the vet because somebody let the puppies out. You know what I mean? Like, whew, like, you look good. Why? Because we grow, we get stronger in adversity. And I want to tell you right now, listen to me. Every conflict that you encounter is a chance to grow your love. Every conflict. Somebody hurts you. There's 59 passages in the New Testament where it talks about one another, one another, one another. Love one another. Honor one another. Forgive one another. 59 times. And I realized one thing, that if I come to Alex, and, this, and God will do this intentionally. This can be in your marriage, in church. The moment you're going to be like, oh God, I want to love you more. You know what God does? He will send a mic. Not mic, but mic. He will send in his life and I will do something. I will poke him. I will say something. For example, just like, maybe unintentionally. And he's going to feel it. And he has a choice to get bitter. Stupid guy. Christian preacher. All preachers are crazy like that. But this is a chance for him to say, you know what? It's hard, but I'm, I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to let it go. And it's painful. And you're like, God, it's hard. But this like branch press, like, God, it's hard to forgive because I've been hurt. I am innocent here, God. But I'm choosing because you said to forgive. God, give me grace. And you're like, oh. And you forgave. And you let go. And you didn't take offense. You're growing. You're growing. You're growing. This is what it means. This is how we get stronger. This is how love, love begins to grow even more and more and more to a point that you're like, man, I love people the way Christ loved them. God gives us the ability, but we grow in that. More and more and more. I just want to let you know that there's something beautiful in relationships. Back in the days, up to the, up to the Constantine, they would have these things called agape feasts. You know what they would do every day, out every time? Almost every day they would come together, a bunch of people. Hey, hey, what are you doing after church? I don't know you, but come with me. Hey, you guys look new. Come here. Where? where? My house. What, doing what? And a feast. And the guys get out there, ribeyes, make food, and they sit around. It's called agape feast, and they would just have fellowship. They would have fellowship, fellowship. This has been lost in our culture. But I want to tell you, there's something so beautiful. Because in relationships with people, this is where healing happens. Because we go to God for forgiveness. We go to God's people for healing. The Bible says, confess to one another that you may be healed. Whenever you're going through something, the body of Christ needs to come around you. There's healing in community. There's healing in relation. This is what the devil is trying so hard to divide the believers, to isolate you from everybody else. They don't care about you. They don't love you. Man, you're done. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. Let the wall down. Let other people come into your life. Forgive. Let go. Embrace love. Because in that there is life. Jesus said, Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Get rid of those things out of your heart. Bring people closer. See Jesus in them. And no matter what, what people do to you, how they hurt you, love them. Just forgive. If you refuse to be offended, yeah, it's okay. Why, everybody, I have to be invited everywhere. I'm not that cool. Oh, it's all right. They didn't invite me. I'm fine. Guys, refuse to be offended. 
Just allow your heart to love other people. I want to challenge you. Some of you here, you're doing life together, just you and your other two, three. Come to my house, okay. Come to my house, okay. And you're going back and forth, back and forth. You're going to give me your... You want to really want to grow this season? Start loving people you've never loved before. Invite people you've never invited before. You really want to grow? After church, find somebody that you've never met before and say, hey, bud. Man, I've been seeing you attending here, City Hill. How are you? What's your name? Oh, my name is Joe. Hey, Joe, my name is Mike. What's up, bud? Like, hey, how did you, like, how long have you been coming here? Hey, you want to grab some coffee? You, you want to grow? Be challenged. Challenge yourself a little bit. That's how we grow. Let's stand to our feet. I want to just ask, the Bible says that the love of God was poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. I don't know where you are in your journey, in your life. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is present here today. He wants to fill your heart. Just I want you to maybe raise your hand and say, Holy Spirit, fill me. I want to love the way you loved me. Holy Spirit, I need you. Fill my heart. I want to love the way you loved me. Anywhere I go, I want to carry this love. I want to love my brothers. And when people see the way I love, they will know that I belong to a different kingdom. The kingdom of God. Let's just present our hearts before the Lord. Look into your heart and just say, Lord, forgive me. For the bitterness that's taken root. For the envy that's in my heart. The hypocrisy in my heart. Lord, I'm, I'm letting go. I'm getting rid of it today. I want to love the way you love. Come on, let's lift our voice in prayer right now. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace that enables us to love the way you loved us. We thank you. Father, we thank you. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We love you and honor you, Father. You are worthy. You are worthy. Thank you.